Lucky, lucky, he shinned it. <laughs> oh, it was a privilege to watch a game with you two. I'm glad I'm not with him Sunday, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we will have to wait and see first, yeah. won't you? Well, yeah, it's mm. true. Um, you know it's going right when your right back scores two, and, right? Yeah. As he described, one off his shin. Uh, but like Ben White's performance tonight, you know, in a in a game where you know we know how how well he can get round Saka, you know what I mean? Because Kukurea causes him so much problems in respect of the marking. So to see him get on the score sheet, but do what he does on a weekly basis, getting round that that winger is getting round Saka is is brilliant. And good luck to him tonight. Got, he deserved his luck with a goal as well. Mm. Tonight, let's get some uh, player reaction now, beginning with Leandro Trossard. Congratulations, guys, on a five-star performance in this amazing atmosphere at the Emirates. What worked so well for you out there tonight? Um, I think the early goal helped us a lot as well. Um, and after that, I think we played so well. We had a lot of chances, and uh, today, yeah, we, we turned them to goals. And, uh, yeah, it's a great night for us. Ben, you guys turned it up a gear in the second half. Both of your goals came, particularly for your first one. How important was the timing of that in the game, just to get that cushion at that point? Yeah, um, we know we know we can score goals, and you know today it was it was a, a quick game and it was so fast. So you know it was uh, Im- important to, to put the ball away when when we had the chance. Well, you don't score many, Ben. Tonight you got two. The second one, did you mean it? Um, yeah, I don't know. Let everyone else uh, decide. Take the credit. Take the credit. He, me- he meant it. It's a goal. It's a goal. It doesn't matter. A goal's a goal, isn't it? Um, in terms of the clean sheets again tonight. This team constantly getting clean sheets this season, 21 in all competitions now. How proud are you playing in this team with such a solid defence with Ben in it and the, and the rest of them? Yeah, it's amazing. Um, they said clean sheets help you win games and that's what it is. Uh, we know if we, can, if we score the goal that uh, a lot of times, yeah, we just we can win by 1-0. But obviously we want to go for more. And today is a perfect night where we, can, where we score loads of goals and, um, yeah, so it's credit to everyone because I think everyone works so hard defensively, attackers, midfielders, and uh, yeah, we are just one team, and you can see that on and off the pitch. So uh, I'm really happy to be here. Does that just prove Ben the mentality in this team as well? Yeah, um, you know, it's not just the defence; it's uh, keeping the clean sheets. It's you know, the wingers are working so hard um, tracking back, and it's so it's so important for us. Um, if, it, if, if our opposition doesn't score, then we've got a chance of winning the game. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. Three points clear at the top of the table, guys. Psychologically, what can that cushion do for you at the top? It's like I said before, <laughs> we can only do our own job, and that's winning games. And uh, we're on the right track now. We want to win the, the next games as well, and uh, then we, we will see at the end what happens. Well done to that, guys. Congratulations. Thank you. They can only do their job, and they are doing it in this week so far. 2-0 at Wolves, 5-0 at home to Chelsea tonight. Ben White had uh, only scored a maximum of two goals in any season in his career. He's just scored two in one game, and you mentioned his all-round game, but that first goal from Ben White in the beginning of the second half was important, as he said there, to settle everyone yeah, down. Yeah, you felt like you, we, we needed that um, simply because... Um, the way the way Chelsea were playing, they were breaking, they're doing well. So the, this goal would settle everybody down, but like the the, the marking gaffer here, you know. Yeah, from a Chelsea point of view, Glenn, it's Chelsea's not, point of view, I mean, that is just schoolboy defending. I don't know why they've not sent somebody out to take the, the, the corner so quickly and so easy. Gilchrist gets caught on his heels, doesn't go there quick enough. And there's too much space there for yeah. Rice, of all people, on the edge of the box. Look at the space that he's got. All right, he doesn't quite catch it, but the ricochet falls to White. And to be fair, he's finished that like a striker. Yeah, yeah. He's not panicked at all. He's kept nice and yeah. calm, kept over the ball and just curled it in the bottom yeah. corner. It was a good finish. It was a very easy goal um, when, when you consider um, the first half that they, they had chances. They, they, you, you could see there was a sniff if they stayed in the game. They could have got a little bit like the pressure in the crowd might have, like, might have rose for them, and, but they didn't do it. They didn't come out with any kind of intention to do that. And that, and that goal was a very easy goal to score and then bam, it is over from now. Yeah. So he got uh, two in a game for the first time in his career. He was asked about it there. A little wry smile said about <laughs> You described it as he shinned it. He didn't mean it, did he? <laughs> well, he didn't mean it, no. I think they were having a little laugh with him as well when they, they were celebrating when they were all hitting him on the head. Yeah. I think that says it all. But it, uh, you, 
give credit where it's due. We said before the game, he sort of plays in a three sometimes, but when they're on the attack, he's prepared to make that little darting run. Sterling goes to sleep completely. Lovely little clip ball there from Odegaard. And he's trying to find the back post mm. because there's two Arsenal players on the back post, spare. And this is the, this is the little the ball that he's prepared to get there. He makes the run and Odegaard sees him. He's trying to play that into you know the something. back post. Yeah. And it just comes off his You know something? Yeah. He's actually caught it on his boot gaffer there. Ooh. But, like, he, you know, it's almost on his ankle. But, like, yeah. he's, caught, he's, he's caught it. That wouldn't have reached any of those players. It, no. it would have been a terrible ball because I think it would have missed everyone. So, you know, he's having that kind of game. You know, he's laughing he's himself. Smile on his he's having that kind of game where he's come off his leg and it's, it's gone in the net. But, yeah. like, he deserves that with the way he played tonight. Yeah. No, without a doubt. And as I was saying, he's, he's done it on a few occasions, isn't he? You see him just... I, what I like about it, when he, when the, way, the shape that they play, is that he arrives there probably two or three times, mm. not all the time. Um, right, let's go back to the Emirates and speak to the Arsenal manager, Mikel Arteta, who's waiting to speak to us. Mikel, very well done tonight. We were just saying, you know it's your night when your full-back Ben White scores two. He's only scored two in his career in one <laughs> season before tonight. Yeah. That means it's a special night and uh, Bain made it uh, really special. But I think it was a, a really good performance collectively from the team and uh, really happy with the results, obviously. What impressed you the most tonight? Because you were really ruthless in that second half, weren't you? Yes, I think we started the game really well. Uh, created many chances. We didn't convert um, all of them. I think the score could have been different. Then we were a bit sloppy in certain areas of the pitch, especially with the ball. And not defending the box in the right way. And we concede two chances uh, because when you leave them a space, uh, they are some great individual assets uh, that can cause you problems. And second half, we were much more disciplined. Created chances, uh, really ruthless in front of goal. And um, I'm very happy for the clean sheet as well. Mikel, Ian Wright, um, congratulations on a great, great Thank result. You. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say half time because it seemed one nil is never a safe um, score to be to be going in with. What 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 was said to them at half time? Well, to continue to do a lot of the things that we were doing, we had to adjust. Uh, one thing, especially in the in the high press, uh, was something they were trying to do. And and then when we were deeper, the discipline in the box because um, we gave something away that I wasn't happy with. And then, yeah, a few things in attack as well because uh, there were some spaces. Uh, I was sure they was going to come out and, and try to be more aggressive, especially inside. And, uh, and we took advantage of that and, uh, and scored some rules. Yeah, well, Glenn Huddle here. Congratulations Hi. on a great performance. Thank you. Just a, a little question from a manager's point of view. It seems now that you have got the perfect balance between the way you're defending and the way that you can open teams up. You must be really delighted with that balance. Yeah, I was really happy and to him we made uh, some changes. Um, Thomas came in the team after a, a long time that we've been missing him and I think he had a, a great impact in the team. Um, and then we have to utilise the players that we have. We have all, every, every member of the squad apart from Jurgen Timber available and, uh, and that's a very strong squad and I'm really happy with the impact of everybody. And Mikel, again, when I spoke to you on Saturday evening, we talked about sharing the goals around. And we talked about Ben White, another two for Kai Havertz as well tonight. Yes, yeah, great. Uh, it was an amazing performance against um, for Kai and uh, scoring the two goals that he scored. He could have scored three or four, uh, but he contributed in in every way, in every phase of play. And um, and again, in ten, in general, you don't score five goals in the team doesn't perform the way they did. So really happy with that. And at this stage, to, that's your biggest ever Premier League win over Chelsea, by the way. What, what what does that just do in terms of this one team on and off the pitch that you keep talking about? I'm uh, really happy. I think we made our people very proud. It's a, it's a big derby for us and, and I know what it means. And uh, hopefully they enjoyed it. Um, let's enjoy tonight and let's go back to work because we have a big one on, on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, you two looking forward to that in here, aren't you? <laughs> yes, we um, do, yes. Just finally, you've done your bit. You're four points clear of City and that's all you can do, isn't it? Just try and ask your former friend, the manager. <laughs> we have to do our job and now watch the TV and see what happens. That's all. Enjoy tonight, Mikel. Thanks very much indeed for talking to us. Thank you, thank you. That's Mikel Arteta live at the Emirates. And what a Philip that is ahead of that huge game on Sunday. Yeah, it is. But um, again, you know, as, as much as I think Arsenal were very ruthless, we saw the, the dangers in the first half, what could have happened if Chelsea had um, a, a striker who could finish. Um, the fact is, is that they, they took their opportunity. They played very well. And in, in the second half, they, they really punished Chelsea. But again... Chelsea without their best player. You know, they looked like a real, real easy touch tonight. 
We touched on the centre forward situation um, mm-hmm. before the game. We touched upon Kai Havertz playing centrally. Yep. As I said to him there, he's got another two goals. He's up to 13 yep. for the season. Well, as, as the striker, he's, he's, he's the main striker. And, you know, what's good about what, what he's doing is he's, he's, in that, he's in the place where he can attack. Like with, with this pass here from, from Erdogan, I think his, his touches are fantastic. The run's great. He's got good strength holding off. That touch there was brilliant. And then the Cucurella doesn't make a challenge. He falls over in the end. But I think the pass, you know something, I think that was actually a foul. If I'm going to be totally honest with Gabriel, I think that he's got, he's got it there, Gaffer. I think yeah. he's got him. Um, he's caught him on the ball. I can't understand why that is something that's not looked at. But once that's done, mm. and you just look at Erdogan in, o- in oceans of space, and then Havertz makes the run brilliantly, the back of Badashile, and then it's the touches, keeps it away from him uh, onto his strong foot, and then it's, it's a good finish. He still had a lot to do, him, yeah, didn't he? Did, it was yeah. a great ball from Erdogan, but he, just the way he took it away from Cucurella and keeps a cool head again, and that's... That's the difference. When a player's confident, mm. he's going in there, he's thinking about scoring, he's believing he's going to yeah, score. Absolutely. When it's not going your way, you have too many things, thoughts going through your head. This, one, this, this is another one. Look, look, he opens himself out beautifully and then it's just the eyes go. Oh, yeah. He knows exactly <laughs> what he's doing there. When you look at it from a certain angle, it actually looks like he could go over to the goal he's left, but he's, he's in such confident form. Like the gaffer said, you can do these things. Look one way, put it the other way, look. Great goal. Yeah, and it's, it's not only it's his body shape. His body shape there looks, look, it looks, everyone in the stadium thinks he's putting it to the goalkeeper's right. No, he doesn't. He just screws it back in that bottom corner. Keeper can't do a thing. He's made some great saves as well yes. mm. today. Couldn't get anywhere near that. He would have enjoyed that against his former club as well, two goals tonight. Well, without a doubt, yeah. But I think, you know, he's moved on from that scenario, yeah. isn't he? And it's, it's proved to him personally, it's been a great move for him. And he's confident. He's, mm. he's, there's, as we said before, there's a, always been a player inside there. It's just about getting it. And I think he's found his position now. Yeah. Mm. And that's just said to him, we are having that conversation at Wolves on Saturday about sharing the goals around yeah. because he hasn't got the, the Haaland or the Salah. Yes. And Trossard again, I mean, his second top scorer. He scored some big goals this yes. season for Arsenal. He's, he's, obviously, he's, done, he's scored a few goals coming off the bench. I think he's got six coming off the bench, but... Like I said earlier on, he's, he's one of our best finishers. And when you look at this situation, Thomas Partey, I thought, had a very good game. You know, Trossard really hugging the line and Declan Rice driving at them, committing the, the Chelsea defenders. And that is just pure power, driving it through them. You can see how it's like you mentioned, Gafford. Nice the way he's come off of there into Thomas Partey. First time touch and Declan Rice in that position, what, what Thomas Partey frees him up to be in. Perfect time to lay it off. And then it was about... Can he get the power to really drive this through the keeper? And yeah, yeah, he couldn't. That's four minutes, and that is a brilliant start for Arsenal. That goal was actually sums Arsenal up. It, it, it epitomises the style of play, the tactics, and the system that they've got. With those players just waiting, and, and sometimes you know your number nine, if he arrives in the box, is a number nine. But tonight he was coming off yeah. and linking the play really, really well. Havertz, and you need that focal point sometimes. Everyone thinks you need a big number nine to do that. Well, he's a tall lad, but he's, he's a bit more elegant than that. And he's, mm. he, he held the ball up. And he's, again, it's back to confidence. When yeah. you're back to play, you see pictures that perhaps when you're not playing so well, all you can see, you're worried about just getting control of the ball, keeping possession. No, he's, he's gone above that. Now. Yeah. He's three or four legs above that. He's now looking up. He's got his head up. He's playing people in. Then he's getting in the penalty mm. area. Well, that, that move, that goal, the, the first goal in the first one, that doesn't happen. If he doesn't get into that position, mm. then comes in to lay it off to Thomas Partey and lay it off with a kind of pace that he can play it first time to Declan Rice. You know, seeing Kai Havertz and seeing him in the positions he's in, in the middle of the goal, the goals where he's scoring, on the edge of the box, he's got the skill, turn, look one way, put it the other. That kind of stuff, linking the play like the gaffer's saying, it's, he's doing the job that we actually need him to do now. But whether proper. you've got a number nine that drifts in there and drops off him or you play with a false nine, that's why a false nine works nowadays, if you've got the right players. Mm. Those centre-backs cannot go in there. Yeah. If they go in there, there's a massive hole and your outside men then yeah. fly in there yeah. and, make, and create space for them. They have to stand in them gaps. And if they go in, it's at your own peril because you've left with one central yeah. defender and runners making runs in behind that number nine or no number nine, you don't know who yeah. to mark. Yeah. There's no one to mark, so you're not going to go in there right into midfield when you're outnumbered. That's why it works so well in modern football yeah. because there's, there's so many passes nowadays yeah. you can achieve that easier. Back in the day, if it was coming from front to back, 
you couldn't do that. No, no. I, I, just, I just think that what, what Arsenal showed, again, with the ruthlessness um, in the way that Havertz came off and passed it, the thing with, you can't do with an Arsenal is not be in their face. You've got to make it uncomfortable for them. I thought, obviously, scoring when you, when you score, the confidence is going to flow through the team. But there was times in that game where that you could see that they look a bit leggy. They looked a bit tired. You know what I mean? Or coming inside a bit. And Chelsea obviously couldn't take advantage of that. But then once Arsenal got going again and started playing, obviously after the second goal as well, you could see them get a fresh, some fresh impetus and go again. Erdegaard started doing his bit. He looked like he was like putting on a bit of a show. There's movement. Chelsea players were deflated. And then it was a case of how many could they score? Yeah, I think, I think looking at that game, assessing that game, as you rightly said, Ian, the first half Chelsea were always in that. They were mm. looking a bit down. Half time came at a perfect time mm. for Arsenal to get back down the tunnel in the dressing room and Mikel didn't allude to it too much but I think there would have been some stronger words said at half time about look we haven't put this team away yeah. you've got to go out there and be ruthless my word them players went out and listened to their manager and were ruthless with some creative football they really mm. the goals were you know take away Chelsea's second half performance they created some lovely goals there with what they, the play that they had and the, the passing and the movement I'm interested in your point about when Thomas Partey's in the mm. team. We know what Declan Rice can do in that role. Yeah. And Declan's um, <coughs> come out and said, hasn't he, publicly, that he enjoys what Mikel wants yeah. him to do further forward. And you were impressed tonight with that particular element to Declan Rice. Yeah, because game. like Declan Rice, like he's, you know, he can play the six. We've seen him do it for England. We've seen him do it for Arsenal. Um, but like when you have got someone like Thomas Partey to give him the freedom to go forward and do that. Look... He's got goals in him as well. He's big, he's strong, he's progressive with the ball. He can run with the ball. He can, he can spot this kind of situation. He's in the like final third. I thought that ball needed to be a bit further yeah. in his path. Gaffer, he's still got yeah. the shot off, but he's a little bit behind him. But he's, he's showing what he's capable of doing as a number eight on that left side, being able to win the ball back in those kind of areas yeah. and then go back in and join in again. I think that's the key. When you, li- when you let him off the leash a little bit and he can play like an eight and he can get himself forward, look, get him ahead of the ball, yes. when he's playing deeper in the six mile, but when he does win the ball, like we've just showed, he's further up the pitch, yes. like you've said. Yes. It, it, you know, it's in the lethal position. You nick it there. If you nick it in front of the centre-backs, you've still got a, a, a base to play. There's six passes probably. But mm. if you win it in the last third, my word, uh, and he's got that little bit of Patrick that, Vieira running in. Yes, it was that surge, drive, that little yeah. run with drive with the yeah. ball. You know, this is obviously this is Chelsea, but, you know, it's poor from them. But, like, again, he's hit it into the right area, Glenn uh, uh, Gaffer. But, like, uh, Ben White's finish is good. But, again, he's shown what he's capable of doing when he's in that attacking um, third of the pitch. He can really make things happen for Arsenal. Look at the amount of t- times he's touched the ball. Uh, you can see he enjoys that role, Glenn, as well. I think he does. I think he can play both. That's the good thing. But I think that's, what he, that's why he made, he made the move to go to an Arsenal. To, to say, look, I've got a little bit more about yes. me if I'm playing with the right players. Yeah. And if Jorginho plays in there, he can still do the same role as party. Mm. So that's where that balance. If those two are injured or they're fatigued or whatever, one's out injured, one's fatigued, he can then be the sitter like he probably will have to be for England, yeah. Yeah. you know, because of the, the players we've right, got in midfield. Yeah. So he can play both, but I'll tell you what, the key to it, he plays both nine out of ten. Yeah. Let's be fair. So as a manager, to put him in either position and know exactly yeah. you're going to get those levels. You, 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 you know what you're going to get with, with Declan Rice week in and week out. That's why he's probably one of the most effective players in the yeah. Premier League. Yeah. We're talking about Palmer, of course, Foden, the likes of creative players. But if you're going to go... 38 games a season with cup games on top, mm. you'd put your hat on him every single yeah. time. Mm-hmm. Well, he's taken part in every, I think he started all but one Premier League game. Yeah, and and he I came think, on in that one against yeah. Luton, so yeah. durable as well. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that um, he, he, he said that he enjoys that because you're more involved in the game. You can do more. We saw all the aspects of his game there. We know that he could play the six, he could break things up, pass it to people, and they can get on with it. But what we've seen today, especially with the first goal, you know, he's run maybe 20, 30 yards. And the pass to Trossard was perfect weight, perfect time, running into players at full pace, taking them on, and then playing a really good pass into, um, into, into Leandro Trossard, you know, because that's what he's capable of doing. He's passing, we saw his one-touch passing, passing and moving. He's more involved in the game. I think when he plays deeper as well, Ian, in this modern-day game, to, to go around and make crunching tackles... Mm. It's no. history. You can't no. do it anymore. Miss time it by a second. Yeah. You're, you're, re- you're red card or you're, you're a yellow. 
what he's great at is timing of the run, timing of the closing down, and he just pinches yeah. your pocket. Mm. So he's not making fouls as well. He will make a few fouls, of course, but he actually knows when to press. So you've got so many attributes from one player. Yeah. It's quite incredible. Mm. OK, um, Arsenal doing their job. Top of the league, four clear of City, three clear of Liverpool, who, of course, play in the Merseyside derby tomorrow, bringing that on match day live from Goodison Park. And I mentioned the difference in the goal difference with those goals tonight. Who knows if it'll come down to that. Four left to play for Arsenal. Huge North London derby, the biggest in years uh, away at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium on Sunday. Home games against Bournemouth and Everton and a trip to Old Trafford. And then they can only watch, as Mikel Arteta said on Thursday, to see what City do at Brighton. Now, listen, they're the treble winners. They're the reigning champions. They've won three in a row. But they wouldn't be human if a tiny bit of extra pressure was placed on them four points behind now. Well, of course, because, because the thing is that they have to still win the games. We know that they're capable of winning the games, but all Arsenal can do, like we heard Leandro Trossard say then, Ben White, is to win their games now. That's what Arsenal had to do before... Obviously, before the Villa game, they had to keep winning those games. Hopefully, that won't come back to bite them because it's a poor, it's a poor result for them. But we know that City in those games are probably capable of beating all of them. So you have to win all your games, and you've got no, there's no, there's no like, there's no wiggle room for you because if they, if they, and City now, we'll we'll see what they are. If if you know, where everybody says, well, they know what they're doing at this stage of the season, they know how to do it. They're going to have to do it again, and they have to prove to us, yeah, we've done this before. And this is what we do. So they're going to have to win all of those games because I'm looking at those games. And obviously Tottenham, the North London derby is a tough game. I think Man United away is always going to be a tough game. But I still think Arsenal are capable of winning all four of those games. But so are City capable of winning all six of them. Yeah, you look at City's fixtures, they're the easier fixtures. And I'm looking at Forest. Forest have got to get points. So they be, that comes maybe a little bit open game. They've got to go for it. You know, Tottenham, when they play Tottenham, Tottenham have got to go for it if they're still in the hunt for the Champions League. Whereas, like, you know, maybe Brighton, Brighton play that way anyway. If they're at home, they're going to be, they're going to be playing a pretty open game. Although, you know, they'll try and tuck the belt in a bit against City. You have to, but they still emphasise on going forward. So those games, I'm seeing the opposition, not only on paper, but I'm thinking what they've got to play for. Hmm. Mm. I don't, I don't see many points dropped there from City. Mm. No. Tottenham are going to play a part. Well, they've got to play all three. They are. They've got to play Liverpool as well, yeah. And I think Villa have got to play Liverpool and Man City yeah, as yeah. well. So they've beaten Arsenal, Villa. So they're going to have a big say for themselves, yeah. obviously. But for the, for the running, it's not over yet by no. any means. It, Can you see a scenario, both of you, where we get to the final day and all three of them are in with a sniff? Ooh, that'd be good. Y- um, yeah. Because, yeah, but somewhere along the... You don't want that, do you? (laughs) I don't know if I want... You have to think about that. No, 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 because if it comes down to the last game and it's Everton at home in the last game, you probably fancy Arsenal. If it came down to that, you know, obviously City have got West Ham, I think, the last game of the season. Could be David Moyes' final game. I I still think that there's there's maybe, I don't know, somewhere along the line, I'm praying that someone could cause um, City a problem or Liverpool a problem so that it can come down to it. You know, because if it comes down to it, then... You it's might, goal difference. You might need Tottenham to do you a favour. Might need Tottenham. And, and you know, if Tottenham could do us a favour, <laughs> honestly. <I'd... laughs> well, they've got, they've got to play City and Liverpool, haven't yeah. they? You know, I just want Tottenham to do the best they can because Tottenham deserve to be in the top four. As well. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it comes down to. These are the margins. I love it. Oh dear. <coughs> I'll have to replay that at the end of the season. Right, a man had the armband and he is left to reflect on it. Here are the post match thoughts of Conor Gallagher. Connor, I imagine that's a tough one to take. What's the most disappointing part of that performance for you? Uh, all of it, really. Uh, we're really upset and disappointed with the performance. Uh, it's nowhere near good enough and. Um, I think we just want to say sorry to the fans to, that came to watch that. It was nowhere near good enough and we'll do everything we can to put it right for the next one. Why wasn't it good enough? It's hard to say. It just we, we started slow. Um, just too, too many mistakes, too, too lethargic as, as a collective. Um, we just weren't at it and we've only got ourselves to look at and, and uh, a lot of work to be done. Can you blame low energy, tiredness, a lack of rhythm with the changes that were made to the team? 
No, we can't make any excuses or, or, or blame anything like that. Uh, we just got to look at ourselves um, as individuals and, and as a team. And uh, we, we know we can be better than that. Um, although you said we might be tired, but it's it's still not, not an excuse because cause we're all there playing. And um, yeah, it just, it just wasn't good enough from, from everyone today. Were you missing a spark out there as well without Cole Palmer on the pitch? Yeah, obviously Cole's been our main man this season, and um, we we missed his uh, you know quality in the final third to create chances or score chances. But um, we got to look at the lads who who played the game, and like I said, no one no one was um, nowhere near good enough. A young Chelsea fan held up a banner that said, "I don't want your shirt. I want you to fight for hours." How does it feel to know that there are some supporters that don't feel like the team are putting the effort in? Well, we we definitely we definitely are putting the effort in. Um, I know how how much it means to all the boys, um, but I know it's been said many times. It's a very young squad with not much experience uh, as a team in in the Premier League. And um, as you've seen this season, we've had a lot of a lot of ups and and a lot of downs as well. And um, you know we're still improving and and working together as a team to to get to that next level. And today was one of them them days where we just were nowhere near it. And um, we need to just kind of dust ourselves off, but also look at the performance and where we can improve and and all the mistakes we made where we can put it right and just get ready for the next one. Appreciate your time. Thank you. No worries. Thank you very much. Well, he was very honest there, Conor well, Gallagher. Um, it was their first defeat in nine Premier League games tonight. I mean, he was getting asked about banners and all kinds there at the end. Yeah, because somebody's gone on with a the banner there. I don't know, it was a young kid as well. But uh, you've got to look, look and say, you know, come semi-final at the weekend, mm. they put the hard graft in. No doubt about it. They were very unfortunate not to win that game. Chelsea's whole season is not about whether they're putting the hard work in and, and fighting for the shirt. It's about the lack of quality at the end of the pitch, the, the finishing. We said it before the game. We showed clips of it. We knew Palmer wasn't going to play. They just haven't taken their chances. Tonight, Ian, was exactly the same. the same. They had some good chances, good opportunities in and around, the, particularly first half. Um, and they look like a side that if those chances are not taken, I mean, Ian, this is the one for I me. I can't understand it. I don't know. I, I can't fathom it. I've, the only thing I can think is, is he think he's going to get kicked in the yeah, face? If that's the case, why is he holding the other arm? He does. You know, why aren't you even, why aren't you just looking at the ball just to head it in? <laughs> Defender's made a mistake. He's in. I'm it's, thinking to myself, right, across the keeper. Yeah. He's taken a touch. You know, he's, he, he could go there now. He still takes a touch. He could still go there, lift it over the keeper. I can't understand that finish. Now, you look at someone like Maurizio Pochettino. He cannot be held accountable for that kind of finish. And I think when you look at the season and the amount of chances Gaffer they've missed throughout the season, yeah. they'll be thinking of Chelsea in a different way now. They wouldn't have a banner like that because I wouldn't question their work rate, Chelsea. No. It's just that they've got a lack of organisation, a lack of experience, and it's not a lack of effort. They're missing too many chances. Yeah, I think their season also, they've had a lot of injuries in the same unit. That back four... Rizzo has had to change that back four so many different times. They've had no basis. And the keeper as well. <laughs> yes. the keeper as well. So they've had no basis to go from yeah. and get those clean sheets that Arsenal have, have, yeah. have earned it because they've worked at it. But if you're changing, the, the, you know, the right back comes out and the left back comes out, that centre half comes out, and you're never getting that continuity together, mm. then you've got a base to go on. And then if you do miss them chances, at least you know you've still got to just take one. Yes. At the moment, they're missing three or four a game. Yeah. Uh, and you can't keep, keep going like that and expect to, to get that consistency. They are a young group of players, but at the moment, at this moment in time, it's like first half, without Palmer, they're, they're still in the game. Mm. At 1-0, they're still in the game. They've had some balls flashed across the box. They've had half chances. And then you're, exp you're going, right, can you do that again, young men, out mm. in a big game? They couldn't do it. They did it for 45 minutes. And that's the difference. Maybe in a season's time or next, you know, early next season, mid-season, might, things might have clicked and they might have that experience in there to achieve it for 90 minutes against a good side going away or going for the Premier League. They are not ready to, go, mm. to do that. It's not that they're not working hard. Mm. They're probably overworking yeah. in many ways <clears throat> because they're a little bit naive. No, I, 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 I totally agree with the gaffer. I think um, it's, it's a tough one because 
You look at Maurizio, Maurizio Pochettino and, you know, you, he just looks like bereft because, again, the semi-final, the chances, and I'm going back to the chances, simply because this is how, how close it is for a manager to either be in a job or be out of a job. Mm. You know, and when you look at the amount of chances they've missed, you could go back through the season. They've been doing it for literally most of the season. They'll be looking at Chelsea in a different way right now if they've taken those. I can't say much more than that. Obviously, the defence and the fact that they've been moved around so many times. Thiago Silva, the age he is now. There's no experience in that team. You heard Conor Gallagher say it there. There's not enough experience in the team. And then when you get into a situation, what, situation like they were with Arsenal, not only have they missed the chances, but they weren't able to have somebody on the pitch that could say, let's drop in for five, let's frustrate Arsenal for a bit. And then when we come out in the second half, we do it a bit, get the crowd on, this, on, them, on them a bit. We've got the pace up front to cause them problems and we see if we can get something there. But they didn't even have the, the, the capability of doing that. OK, well, talking of the manager, here he is. Let's get his thoughts. The Chelsea boss, Mauricio Pochettino. Explain that, isn't it? Were you disappointed with the way your players started the game? No, it's not difficult to explain. I think in the way I think everyone saw that we didn't compete from the beginning of the of the game. After um, I think we concede, uh, um, I think the team was so soft, so you know, so disappointed with the with the start because I think supposed to have a. To have a full conf uh, energy and, and compete better, I think in the way that we lose the ball and always the first, the second ball that away, um, we were not aggressive and not concentrate in in situation that uh, was so easy to uh, to find the solution. That is what why we are so disappointed. I am so disappointed. And then when in the first half, I think we we repose after. I think we recovered from this, you know, star so so low. We create some chances. We had some chances, but then in the second half we were talking uh, on the half time and to start in a different way. But we start really bad. And in 10-15 minutes in the first half, and in 10-15 minutes in the second half, I think the team, when we concede the third goal, I think give up and 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 go start for them, you know, and start the team start to suffer uh, to go to the end of the of the game. Is it an excuse that Desas has missed a couple of games? Barry Shields been out for. A- a while for you is that an excuse that they lack minutes? That is the circumstance that we are that we had in the, in the we have in the team and that we cannot change. Uh, um, I think to compete, uh, we competed really really well Saturday in Manchester City. I think it was a fantastic game. But and then uh, we are not consistent. Three days after, I think we were suffering. We were not fresh, or maybe you know uh, we want to refresh the team with different player that didn't play. But uh, wasn't enough. Um, yes, all the circumstances maybe are the um, the why. You know, we are not not consistent. No? Obviously, you're going to miss Cole Palmer. He's been brilliant for you this season. I just wonder how much Malo Gusto was missed tonight because he's had a sensational season. No, it's not fair to to talk about the players that we are missing. But we are missing from the beginning of the season too many players. You know, every single week, and that is why today I think competing. Um, one team competing for the Premier League and another uh, with uh, circumstances that we, we have. I think, uh, yes, in the moment that uh, was the, t- the game was, was difficult, 3-0 for them, I think in this moment the team uh, showed lack of you know, uh, uh, capacity uh, um, to resist. That is, was a problem. Arsenal play very good football. They were superb tonight. You've got you've got big teams coming up as well, haven't you? Around the corner, Aston Villa, where Aston Villa been? Of course, Arsenal is a very good team, but I not agree that they. <laughs> I think we allowed them to play. I think we gave all the um, the possibility to to play and to create chances. That is why we are disappointed because in the te- in the moment that we increase our level and and we were a little bit more aggressive, I think you the, the game was in, in some part of the game we was an even game, you know, but I think it's too inconsistent. Also, no during the season, you know, during 90 minutes we were very inconsistent today and to keep the the energy and the energy that you need if you want to be competitive. Will Cole Palmer be back for the weekend? We don't know. We need to assess tomorrow and after tomorrow. Will you expect a reaction at the weekend from your players after after five? We'll see. We'll see the the squad that we will have. We'll see if today some player more maybe have some problems. Um, we need to deal with this, this situation. We'll see. 
You're welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah, you can hear Mauricio Pochettino's frustration in his voice. Glenn, I just wonder, I mean, you, you, you've been in that position. Given what's been thrown at him and given all the inconsistencies that you've mentioned, could anyone be doing any better in this situation? Well, I think the results Chelsea? could have been better in the sense that they, they, if they become clinical, if they yeah. take their chances, it's a different story. Has he got clinical players, though? They haven't, no. no. It, you've got to be honest and say there's too many players. The players like for the three top clubs, for Arsenal, Liverpool and Man City, the players that step in, you know, early in the season, Martinelli was playing superb. And you're thinking, how's Trossard ever going to get in this yeah. Arsenal team? Well, later on in the season, he's been a massive plus. And when he comes in, he steps in and, and you don't see the team deficiency mm. in their performance. It's the same for City. If De Bruyne don't play, someone can And Liverpool have got the same squad. Chelsea are on this rebuild and they've had some injuries as well. Like I've said, the back four has always been changed. And he's had no solid sort of back four that he could hang his hat on mm. and then the team go and play and if they are missing chances up there the back four says okay if you don't take your chances we're not going to concede that hasn't been Chelsea all this season they've been so inconsistent and there's no better results than they win 6-0 at home they go and play well in the semi-final against City and then they go and get beat 5-0 mm. tonight and I was surprised because City away at the Etihad they were superb in their tactics. They sat in against City and they broke on them. They got a draw there, but it could have gone either way and they created a lot of chances. And I was surprised they didn't do this today at Arsenal, particularly without their talisman mm -hmm. in Palmer. Yeah, the thing is, is that when you saw the way they played, even when we played them at Stamford Bridge, is that they played a bit like that. They pressed high, they won the ball high. They didn't have that same energy, but at the same time, they didn't, they didn't drop in. They didn't make it difficult for Arsenal. Arsenal's problem has been when a team, what we saw with Bayern Munich and Villa, is a mid-block. I thought that that might have happened today, yeah. where they just kind of stifled Arsenal and, and, and get Arsenal where they feel very vulnerable. And that was in that mid -block. They never done it. They were comfortable all the way through that game. They didn't press them high. They, went, they, broke, that, um, they broke that press very easy. And then they were into them. And this is why you saw the goal in the first four minutes. I thought... That that's what they would have done as well. They would have been low block with the pace to break. But I, I, I still have to look at the, at the manager and, and wonder what they're working on in, in training in respect of who they're coming up against. Because what you said about the City, City, they they done it at City. In low block, they broke. They you know they looked like they looked half decent. Tina looked very good. I can't understand how you can come to Arsenal and not have the same not have the same game plan when you know that that can frustrate and it can work for you and it can play into your strength as well, the pace you've got up front. Yeah, I mean, I was surprised that that didn't happen. I, I, was, I was expecting them to drop in a little bit and make it difficult because they didn't drop on the edge of their 18-yard box. Mm -mm. They made themselves really tight where it was hard to get in behind them, but they weren't going to go pressing too high. They didn't do one or the other today. You yeah. didn't say, like, you, we couldn't analyse it and say, look, look at their pressing. They're mm -hmm. hunting the ball together. I'm not sure they had the energy left. I'm not sure they had the, the players yet in sync to do that. So realistically, it's a tough game. Arsenal away. You know, they're going for the league. Mm. Drop in, make yourself tight, make yourself difficult to play against. Let them have the ball mm. up there and then hit them on the break. Jackson's got pace, as we saw in the first half a couple of times, and then get bodies forward from that position, you know, and you might have just picked a certain team to play that way. But I think he said there, Maurizio said, we started so poorly and we started the second half after the talk at half time poorly. Now, with youngsters, is that fear? Mm. Is there a too much fear in there or is it a lack of character and, and a lack of experience? Because your opponents are going to come at you in those period of time when they're at home, early in the game and then in the second half, Mikel would have had a little pop mm. at Arsenal, I think, behind them yeah. doors, just to say, we've got to put this team to bed. You know and they did. You know, it's interesting, Gaffer, when you say, is it fear and that? They, they seem like, like we saw, one of the big incidents with the penalty, mm. the penalty thing with people fighting for the ball. Now, when you've got that kind of energy and that kind of confidence because you want that, and you can do that in front of a whole crowd of, 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 of fans, when we're not talking about two players are pulling trees up in respect of their performances. <laughs> it's true. So when you look at their dressing room and you see players have got the confidence, um, and let's face it, the neck to do that to the best player in the team, but then when you really need, they're, they're not turning up. And then you're looking at a manager that's got to manage those players who... 
they seem to they seem to me like they, their minds are not properly in what they need to do. If you're thinking about taking a penalty at 4-0, mm. but you come to Arsenal and you almost disappear and miss chances, there's something wrong. There's something massively wrong in that dressing room. Yeah, I think it's a good example because reflecting back on that, it doesn't matter if you're 10-0 up or 10-0 down, Palmer's the penalty taker. Yeah. Mm. And by the way, he scored eight out of eight. Yeah. You know, it's not like he's missed a couple of his last ones. You could maybe say they might have a case, but yeah. no way. Because it was 4 0, they're thinking, oh, I want to be on the score sheet. That shouldn't, it, he should have been the first one to run and get the ball and give it to Palmer. Give it to Palmer. Say, yeah. let's get in. Yeah. That's a little bit, that's the little bit of the. A telltale the, sign in there. The culture. Killer, the, well, yes. the killer instinct that they haven't got. Yes. They haven't got that killer instinct. When you've got your foot on their throat, don't let them off. Mm. You know, whether it's 5 0, 6 0, it doesn't matter. If he's the penalty taker, yeah. you give him the ball. That says and, to me they that, want it easy. That says a lot about the that old says, That's what that says to me. Yeah. Taking a penalty at 4 0, fighting for it, you want it easy when I could just get one to take one from 12 yards. You want it easy. It's not easy. Especially when you come somewhere like Arsenal and you haven't got your best player. You need to show up. You need to show, OK, Cole's not here, but we're going to show you what we're capable of doing. And again, they missed chances to that. And then, let's face it, I think they clocked off after 2 0. Clocked off. Well, he admitted that there, didn't he? So we gave up at, yeah. when the third Locked goal went He did. He, I mean, that wouldn't have been what he wanted to see, but he was honest enough to yeah. say. And he'd probably be saying, you know, to come out on the telly and say that, he's obviously said it to the players. Yeah. You can't not tell them and come out and say it on the television. So he's had a go at them, with no doubt. And, and rightly so. Second half, at the end of the day, they, they went missing. They certainly did. You two didn't, though. You've been a pleasure as always, Glenn and Righty. Thank Thanks. you very much indeed. A very difficult and damaging night, potentially, for Chelsea. But Arsenal keep on coming up with the answers. This title race is still going. Liverpool next on Wednesday. See you soon. Thoughts on Arsenal and Chelsea. Arsenal have been the nearest challenger to Manchester City last season. They have maintained that position this season. Although they led the league for a long while, they lose the lead only two games ago. They are along with Liverpool behind on goal difference, leading the pack again with the leader City yet to play their games. They can only try to win their own games and hope Manchester City slip up to win the trophy. Chelsea, however, are a work in progress currently at ninth position in the league. They lack consistency, yet in some games, especially those involving the better teams, they will play well and upset their competition. Then in the next game, they will lose to those behind them. They need to up their game and compete at the least in the Champions League spot because that is what such a big club with big finances deserve to be.